Hello and welcome to the Literary Lair, and welcome to the new year! It's 2014, and it's time again for this show. And it's not a book review, it's a top ten list. Top ten what, however? I've been watching a lot of Star Trek recently, and I've got to thinking about my favorite Star Trek series, The Next Generation. I haven't touched on this before or since before Dishonor, so I want to talk about the good aspects of the show since Before Dishonor was a black hole of suck. Therefore, it's time for my top 10 Star Trek Next Generation episodes. Also, it's a new year. I'm not waiting until March for the new theme song this time. Let me fix it. So, this episode. Why do I like it? Two reasons. I love Lore and Data and Dr. Sung. I like seeing that they took the idea of Data being an android and expanded on his origins and Lore being the prototype and Dr. Sung wanting to fix Data after all the years that they hadn't seen each other. But the second reason is the brother thing. The episode is framed with two kids, brothers, where the older one played the prank on the younger one and as a result nearly kills him. If you don't know, I have a younger brother, and this episode kind of hit home for me, because even though my brother is the one who plays the pranks on me, the episode made me happy that I had a brother to share stuff with, and even though he could make me angry, I'll always forgive him. In fact, it's the closing line of the episode. They're brothers, Data. Brothers forgive. That's why I like this episode, because it's more of a sentimental thing. It reminds me that having a brother might be a pain in the ass sometimes, but he'll always be there for me, and me for him. Number 9. Future Imperfect. This isn't that good of an episode, but I love it anyway. I love time travel on alternate timelines, and this episode is chock full of it. Riker goes down to a planet, and when he's beamed up, he finds that 16 years have passed, and that he's captain of the Enterprise, and has a son. Also, the Federation is about to make a peace treaty with the Romulans, and now Riker knows for a fact that something is up, because the Federation and the Romulans allying? That's crazy! It's like the Federation and the Klingons becoming allies! Anyway, he finds out that his supposed wife is a holodeck character that he encountered back in Season 1. I won't spoil the true ending, but I love this episode a lot. The alternate future, plus the combatures of the future, are sweet. Also, what other episode has Riker telling a mustachioed Picard to shut up? Just this. Shut up! Beg your pardon. I said shut up, as in close your mouth and stop talking. Number 8, Sarek. This one should be obvious. It has the fantastic Mark Leonard in it, and it's also a nice callback to TOS without the main TOS cast. We get Sarek, Spock's dad, coming onto the Enterprise, but he has a condition that's making his mental stability somewhat unvulcany. It's basically the Vulcan form of Alzheimer's. And the episode is really good. It's nice to see Sarek again. He hadn't been seen since Star Trek VI, and I'll admit, if you ask me for my favorite TOS guest star, it's either him or Clint Howard. Mark Leonard is a great actor, and he has amazing chemistry with the TNG cast. And it's nice that, like most of the TOS actors, he got to appear in another series. Number 7. Tapestry. Seeing a pattern? Yeah, my favorites are the time travel ones mostly, and this is one of the better ones. In it, Picard nearly dies and gets a chance to change a moment in his life when he was a brash young man, but in doing so, is shown a world where he never got command because he always took the safe way out. And plus, it has some of the best banter between Q and Picard. Is there a John Luck Pickard here? And it gave the 1990s fanfic writer some material for a Picard Q story.
Morning, darling. Number six, Time's Arrow. More time travel. This one I like because it's another Data episode. And if they find Data's head in an archaeological dig in San Francisco, and it seems like it's been there since the 19th century, Data takes it as a notice that unlike he assumed in his past, his life does have an end, because as an android, theoretically he could live forever. He's actually fine with it, since he now knows that he can't die until he goes to 19th century San Francisco. Well, the Davidians show up, and if you played Star Trek Online, you know they have the ability to jump through time portals, which Data goes through. He lives his life there, and even runs into a much younger Guinan and Mark Twain. Picard and the senior crew follow Data through and, are sh and show up a couple weeks later, and the explanation on why Guinan and friends with Picard is explained and how Data's head exists in the past. It's a great episode, and one of the better Star Trek season finales. Number 5. Best of Both Worlds This was a given. It had to be on the list. It was the episode that showed the Borg were a legitimate threat. Sure, their first appearance was in Q-Who, and they were evil, but this episode showed that they mean business. It's a fantastic battle, and Picard becoming a Borg was a great way to ramp up the suspense. It seemed like Picard might not come back at the end of Part 1. It was a great episode, and I highly recommend it to all TNG fans if they haven't seen it yet. Number 4. Unification This one, to explain why I like it, only one word is needed. Spock. This is the episode where Leonard Nimoy returned to Spock, not having been seen since Star Trek VI, and he would return again in 2009 for J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, and again in 2013 for a glorified cameo in, in Star Trek Into Darkness. The episode is part of the Sela arc, which makes it better since we got to see more Denise Crosby, and while I don't like Tasha Yar, I do think that she deserved to come back. But all in all, the episode is about Spock, and is actually dedicated to Gene Roddenberry, who passed away shortly before the episode's airing. So it showed the death of a beloved character, while the Great Bird of the Galaxy also left the mortal coil. A fitting episode to dedicate his memory. Number 3, The Inner Light. How can I not love this episode? I love time travel and alternate realities, but this one, it really took the cake for me. Picard gets zapped by an alien probe and wakes up in the body of a man on a primitive planet named Kaiman. Sort of like Space Quantum Leap, with Patrick Stewart playing Sam Beckett. Heh. <laughs> Another position Stewart would do better than Bakula. But I digress. He lives a life, a full life, in the span of a half hour. He gets to see the dying eight days of the planet, raises a family, and does what he never had time for as the captain of the Enterprise. When he regains consciousness, they open the probe and he gets a flute, which is Kamen's prized possession. It's something that they call back to in later episodes and can be spotted in his ready room in Star Trek Nemesis. Number 2. All Good Things. This, I think, was one of TNG's best outings. And even without the films, this would have been a fitting end to the series, leaving it open-ended, but also giving a sense of fulfillment that the show made it. The plot is that Picard is sifting through three time frames, the present, the first episode, and the future. It's a Q episode, and it's revealed that the trial from the first episode never truly ended. We get a glance at the definitely not real future. How do I know? They're wearing the alternate universe future uniform, which are worn in two other negated timelines in Deep Space Nine and Voyager. But, as a finale, it succeeds in all the aspects. There are a few nitpicks here and there, but I love the episode, and it even showed us a future that's quite similar to the canon one, where Geordi has ocular implants and the Klingons and the Federation aren't allies anymore. If you ask for my favorite episode from the Q arc, this would be it, because it's really good. Number 1. Yesterday's Enterprise yeah, this is the big one. I love this episode. It's TNG's best hands down. The basic plot is that a temporal anomaly opens and the Enterprise C comes out, but that alters the timeline because the Enterprise C saved a Klingon outpost from a Romulan attack, and it's one of the defining reasons that the Klingons allied with the Federation. In the altered timeline, the Klingons are at war with Starfleet, and Worf is obviously gone, replaced by a still living Tasha Yar. The only person that noticed the change is Guinan, since her species can sense changes in time, and she tries to convince Picard that the only way to save the universe is to send the Enterprise C crew to their deaths. After their captain dies, Tasha transfers to the Enterprise C and helps them get home, which is how Sela exists. TNG never got a Mirror Universe episode, but that's okay because they got this, which is a universe that had one slight change that completely overturned the TNG that we know and love, and I love it. Part of me loves it for the militaristic uniforms, but another part just loves it because it's a great episode. And I implore you to watch this, because it's a great episode and totally worth your time. 
It even has my favorite Star Trek of, quote of all time in it. Let's make sure history never forgets the name Enterprise. And that was my top ten TNG episodes. Did your favorites make the list? Tell me, since there's a good chance that the episodes you would have wanted on the list would have made it into my 11 to 20 ranking. Next week, we revisit the past again to take a look at the second book I ever reviewed on this show. And it's nice that, and it's nice that most of the TOS actors, and it's nice that he, 